From the shores of Puget Sound, this is Greener Views, a unique media resource for information, education, consultation, and fun. Greener Views is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Each episode will introduce and connect you with services, products, practices, organizations, and groups that focus on the health, happiness, safety, well-being, charity, and community of all. Find us on the web at www.greenerviews.net. And now, your host, Daryl Whalen. Well, welcome to episode 25 of Greener Views. I'm Daryl Whalen, along with audio engineer Randy Parcell and videographer Michael Schwartz. On our last episode, which was number 24, our guest was Stephen Seiden, who spoke with us about Buckminster Fuller and Stephen's brand new book, A Fuller View, which is being officially released on April 1st, 2012. Joining us this time around is John Nelson, who will be talking to us about Cove to Clover and helping us to answer such questions as, what is unique about this race? What should runners expect? What is the Angel program about? Tell uh, what of uh, the Shoemaker program, and uh, whether there is anything new about the event this year, uh, amongst some other things. So, Green Reviews is a part of the Healthy Homecast Network and is brought to you exclusively by HealthyPainting.com and AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. So let's get rolling. Welcome to the show, John Nelson, and thank you for joining us this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me. You're quite welcome. So let's get right into it. What is Clove to Cove to Clover? Cove to Clover. Clove so, to Clover. Cove to Clover. So that's that's a common mistake. People, yeah. you know, I hear Clover to Clover all the time, and I hear all sorts of things. So I'll just I'll explain it, sort of the etymology of what Cove to Clover is. So the Cove is the Normandy Park Cove, if you're familiar with the area. It's down right on the water. It's a nice little uh, area. There's a clubhouse. And then right next to it, there's this giant hill that snakes up to the very top mm. of Gregory Heights. And it's about a, well, I've measured it several times, and I come up with a different answer, but around 500 vertical feet, right from the start line of the, of the race. And it goes all the way to the Irish Beer Garden. This is a Irish um, sort of St. Patrick's Day race. So the clover is the Beer Garden Irish Festival at the end. So it's from the Cove to the Clover, and in between is Snake Hill, which is, we'll talk more about that later. It's all work in between and all play at the other end. Yeah, that's right. Yep. Great. Uh, so what are the upcoming dates, uh, times, and the uh, links of uh, this upcoming event? So it, it's really evolved into a whole weekend. It starts on March 9th. It's March 9th to March 11th. Um, this year... March 9th, we have a pub crawl, which uh, we have every year, and it's well attended. And the pub crawl is in Burien. Uh, registration starts, I believe, at 5 p.m. on Burien Town Square, and then a bunch of the local businesses participate. And you can go out and have a drink and, you know, make sure you get a driver when you go home. Um, and then we'll have a ba band on Burien Town Square after the pub crawl, a great band, the Burien Ball Bangers. Which, the Ball Bangers. The Ball Bangers, yes. An excellent name, but um, <laughs> has a great local following, and they are sure to put on a good show. On Saturday, we have a talent show, kids' talent show, on Burien Town Square. It's from noon until 4 p.m. And basically, since we put the tent up and we have the stage and we have the audio gear, we thought, hey, why not let the kids get up there and do some stuff since we have to pay for it all anyways? So that's a day where we're not trying to make money. We're just letting the kids go up there and have some fun. And the beer garden is open, so if you want to go have a beer, you know, watch your kid out there. That's a good good way to do it. Chet, the beer garden, by the way, is run by Mick Kelly's. It's a charity beer garden, um, and all the profits go to the Coca Clover charity. And then on Sunday, March 11th, is the is the race. There's three aspects to the race. There's a 10K, starts at 12.30 from Normandy Park Town Center. 5K starts at 1 p.m. down at the Cove. And the We Race, we call it, which is a family race, is a one-mile flat course, which starts at St. Francis. And they all end at the same finish line at Burien Town Square. Great. So, yeah, what is the uh, the uh, charity 
of uh, Cove to Clover. So Cove, Cove to Clover started out as a very, um, just a group of friends deciding we wanted to do something good. Turned out we started making money, and so we have formed a nonprofit. We're an official 501c3, and we're what we call an umbrella nonprofit, and we basically give all of our money away to local charities. Um, and it's a really great thing because, I mean, we do get insurance for the race and stuff, but if something happens, in the end, we don't have any money for people to come after us because we don't have any money because we give it all away at, at the end of every year. You know, we hold a little bit back so that we can get started the next year, but it's it's not enough for anyone that, to want to sue us. So <laughs> kind of nice nice way to go. So you talked about this got started with talking to some chatting with some friends about doing something yeah. good in the community and, yeah. and good in general and well and also I remember the Patty's Day dash in downtown Seattle when I was a twenty something and I loved everything about it. It felt like the way to welcome spring in. You go out, you do something a little bit hard, and then you meet all your friends in the beer garden and, and your family and that thing got so big that I just couldn't take it anymore. So I could never find my friends, you know, and it just, it felt like I wanted to recapture what I loved about that race. And so, you know, this was, was, was an opportunity. It was an empty vessel to sort of create it and even make it better and make it exactly the way I wanted it. And, uh, my friends all put in their ideas, but I, ultimately I was a dictator about it, the vision of what it should be. And, uh, El Capitan. El Capitan. Yeah. Sweet. What about, uh, so that's a little bit about how it got started. Mm -hmm. How how many uh, years has this been going? This is or? the fourth annual. Okay. Um, yep. So it's grown. The first year, I think we had around 500 runners. Last year, we had about 1,700 registrants. Wow. And hopefully this year, we'll be well over 2,000. Um, registrations are a little light, so yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but it doesn't really matter because as long as we're making some money to give back to places, that's that's good with me. Isn't it kind of the way we are in this in day and age, where the reg, uh, registration's probably really poor in at the end? Well, that de that definitely happens. Um, I try, you know, a lot of races they'll re they'll step up the fees every two yeah. weeks, you know. And, you know, I don't want to do that to my yeah, friends yeah, and yeah. families. Everyone's busy, so we will step them up at the kind of the beginning of March, but. Uh, you know, because of the way I let let the fees stay the same right up till till the end, we don't get registrations toward till till the end. I think that's how people just are a lot of times. Yeah. So, what are some of the places that the money goes to? Well, this year we have so the way we set it up is I we work with a bunch of different charities, and we ask that the charities volunteer in order to get paid out, and so it's a great way to bring volunteers in. They get some exposure, and some of the organizations like Parlos Ninos really needs to get it integrated with with you know the rest of the community. So it's a great way to sort of get those volunteers involved with you know non traditional activities. And uh, so we have Parlos Ninos, we have Hospitality House, we have Highline Schools Foundation is a very big um, help with the organization, as well as the Highline Food Bank. Um, Oh, man. I wish I had my list with yeah, me. Yeah, there's a bunch of if, good ones. It if you go like... to covetoclover.com, I think right on the home page, you can see the list of who we, we gave money to last year, along with the amounts. And uh, this year, there's a few more. Uh, new Futures is another one that's local and very popular. They're new this year. Yeah, and we'll put those links and stuff on the, sh on the site as well. Um, so am I correct? Are you you're the director of the El Capitan? I am the race director, race organizer, and president of Cove to Clover, yeah. So what are your uh, main roles and responsibilities? It sounds like you got a lot of people. Are your friends that you started this with uh, four or five years ago? Yeah, are they still... they're still involved. Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to branch out so we, I don't bury them with tons of work yeah. like I did the first year. Um, sounds obviously... like there's a lot of people stepping up to the plate on this, though. There are, yeah. yeah. There are definitely a lot of organizations that come in. Ultimately everything falls on me. So I, I yeah. keep an eye on, you know, if you're not paying anyone, which is mostly what we're doing, we're not paying anyone, yeah. including myself. Um, you know, you get what you pay for. So, you know, you can ask someone to do something, but if they're a volunteer, you better check on them. And I've 
through the years, I've sort of figured out, as as you know, which volunteers can deliver and which ones you need to keep an eye on and which ones don't give them anything. You're just gonna, <laughs> you're gonna end up yeah. hating it later. Um, but I order all the you know make sure the t-shirts get ordered and the bibs and anything big where on race day it's going to be a disaster if it's not done. So I kind of keep my eye on the big, big issues. Great. Um, so what are you most passionate about as related to this work? What's the thing that after, uh, so this is the fourth year or the this fifth year? This is the fourth year, yeah. So after four years, what is the thing about this that still motivates you and drives you to keep this thing going? Well, if you, if you come out on race day, you'll see what motivates me. It's, yeah. It feels like, the whole community came yeah. out to the party I threw and that we all threw as, as organizers and everybody's happy. Everyone's suffered together <laughs> and everyone's raising a glass, whether it be a free root beer glass from the root beer garden that we put on for the kids or in the charity beer garden, like nothing like it. You're like the whole community together, this is where we need to be heading as a community. And we just, I want more of this. It's great. <laughs> Yeah, Randy says he might try, try the race. I'll probably just hang out in the root beer garden myself. <laughs> um, so, uh, so I, I mean, the community thing is great. Uh, Burien and Normandy Park, they're pretty right. pretty much uh, neighborly. Um, there's a lot of great stuff going on. I moved to Burien uh, a little over two years ago from uh, West Seattle. And uh, I love West Seattle, but uh, Burien's a little smaller, a little more community-focused. Yeah. I really like that. Uh, aside from... Uh, Aside from the, the community thing and all the fun, why is this event important? Well, I mean, being able to give back to the community, I mean, give back to these charities, yeah. it just feels just feels like we're sculpting something out of out of the goodwill of our community. Like, we're building something from no, nothing. We just made this up. And people like it. They come out and they participate. And then we got to be the people that get to give money back to the charities that need it. So, I mean, there's, there's nothing wrong about what we do. It's very hard to find a naysayer about what we do. So, I mean, as long as it's fun, I'm going to keep doing it. You know? Cool. Yeah. And tech, in this economy, the, over the last few years, charities are, they're saying charities they are, are having a tougher time. Yep. So it's really great that, yeah. that you're come, stepping up to the plate like this. Is there a motto or a mission statement or some kind of tagline for Cove to Clover? Yeah, well, we started. We <laughs> Mick Purdy is the uh, is uh, one of the owners of Mick Kelly's uh, and uh, or former owners. He was an owner at the time when we started the race. And if you don't know Mick, he's got a very thick Irish accent, and I didn't know him very well. And um, we were trying to come up with a tagline. He's like, "Whoa, it's got to be beat the snake," and I was like. And I was kind of taken aback and said, you know, that's totally inappropriate. And he's like, I don't know what you're talking about. It's perfect. And I was like. It sounds a little adult. It seemed wrong to me. And, uh, you know, and I kind of asked some parents. And, you know, I had some parents say, oh, no, I would never let my kid wear a shirt that said that. And <laughs> a, a, a lot of different levels. Right. Well, officially, that is the tagline okay. of the race. Is but be, it's a little secret. Yeah. Well, also, Mick was totally pulling my leg like he totally knew what it meant what what the double That's double funny. entendre was but um this year we have a different tagline on the shirt and it just you know i might just wait and let that yeah, be a great. surprise okay yeah. cool oh, i love the logo by the way thank you uh, uh the snake uh, wrapped around the space needle every year so kevin nyrider is a friend of mine who's been the artist for the snake first first year uh local artist scott drumbrowski did our artwork and then I started getting my other friend involved and he came up with a snake motif and every year the snake is growing in size and you know this year he's kind of marching down the between buildings you know where the buildings are on fire he's overturned a bus i mean he's just <laughs> giant so I'm not yeah. sure next year we're planning on going a different direction because we've now had three of the same snake yeah, yeah, yeah. so we're going to do a student art contest that's really cool for the idea. 2013 art and so whatever kid comes up with the best art, we're gonna we're gonna try and get it on the shirt and the poster for 2013. And cool. It'd be pretty cool for a kid. Yeah, not seeing, not having seen any of the uh, previous uh, logos and stuff. The one yeah. that's on the site right now is really cool. Thank you. A friend of mine, Rosemary, she uh, won the contest one year for Bumbershoot and got to design the logo for like all of Bumbershoot. Nice. Yeah, I don't know. It's been a little while back, but 
she right. probably got paid. That's probably she big, may have. That's she's big a big difference. Design. She's a very talented <laughs> uh, designer and stuff. But yeah, uh, that's really cool that you're getting the community involved yeah, yeah. on a different level by having them yeah. produce the design art yeah. and stuff. And uh, knowing some uh, kids and stuff that uh, you're likely to uh, get some really cool stuff. Oh, I, I'm uh, sure. I am absolutely certain. And we're going to display all of the artwork right in the the town square condo. Uh, Condos down there, right on Town Square. So on race day, you can check out all the artwork there. Cool. Up there, yeah. So uh, did, had we gotten into what's so unique about this race? Uh, I I don't know, but I don't think so. So okay. I can describe that. Um, I would say that this is probably one of the hardest five Ks in all of Washington. Wow. With with that hill, right at the start line. I mean, you don't have a chance to even warm up. Yeah. And you know, people that are not runners go around that first corner, and and it's always it's always kind of funny to see them puking on the side <laughs> of the road in the first block and a half. Why you know? is that it's always funny? Well, <laughs> I do believe that that people like to suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we suffer so that we can enjoy yeah. the other part of it's our. It's called lives. balance. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, yeah. so people suffer. So there is suffering involved with this race, guaranteed. Yeah. Um, We've added a 10K on this year. So this year, if you like to have your suffering at the middle of the race, you can start and run 5K, and then you, you cross the 5K start line, and then you have to run Snake Hill. If you like to double your suffering. Right. Gotcha. If you like to double it, yeah. <laughs> um, the other thing that's unique is we have a thing called the Uprising. And, you you know, we've seen a bunch of these obstacle course races, and they're mm -hmm. very popular. And we wanted to put a little twist on ours. So we... We call this thing the uprising, and it's uh, again a double entendre. It's it's an uprising because you have to go up and over this obstacle. Um, and if you haven't seen the obstacle, it's nearly impossible to get over. So yeah. I'll be amazed if if people can get over it this year. But the other thing is we stage a Celtic battle scene all <laughs> around it. So we'll have probably thirty. Um, football players all dressed as Celtic warriors <laughs> reenacting a battle scene. So Crazy. we have smoke machines and we have, you know, fire effects. And so as people come through here, it's just kind of chaotic and fun. It's and quite a production. It's really a production. Yeah. yeah it's great. Cool. It's, it's great fun. Yeah. Reminds me of like the, uh, like the Shakespearean festival yeah. or something. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, what can we do that's fun and unique yeah, yeah, yeah. and draw attention to our community and sort of raise it up to the next level. It was pretty funny last year to see the lead runners, kind of elite runners, come around the corner, and they kind of heard about the uprising. But they, you have the opportunity to go around the uprising, yeah. but it's longer, and there's a sign that says, you know, plus point oh one if you go that way, yeah. and you, or you can just go up over this uprising. So the yeah. other guy's trying to size up the guy behind him to decide whether he was going over the uprising because they didn't know what to do. You know, this is pretty unique situation this is how you separate the men and the women from the boys and the yeah. girls well we the uprising right and we do <laughs> stage warriors on the bypass and they will heckle you if you go around so just be aware that 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 will happen oh my goodness that's fun so that makes it unique um we have a free free root beer and free hot dogs for the kids at the finish line um just because we don't we're not trying to gouge everyone you know people pay money to come to the race and you know, it's a great way to just get the kids and they can come and have fun. We have entertainment and, uh, you know, it'll allow you to buy, buy a beer or whatever. Cool. Yeah. Um, how much money did you guys get last year? Do you remember? So last year we gave away, I think, about $37,000. Wow. And I think we great. kept 1000 Cool. For, to get started. This and year. do you remember the first year, how you did on the first year? Uh, I think it was around 16000 So yeah. we've been... More than double. Yeah. yeah, but last year, I think the year before last, we had like 36000 But last yeah. year, I invested quite a bit into the race to try yeah. and, you know, the uprising was a new thing. It yeah, cost yeah. money to bring in a whole bunch of stuff. So, you know, we experiment with some things, but we're not going to cheap out. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. we have a brand and we are trying to grow the brand. And so if people pay to sign up, they yeah. are guaranteed to have a good Well, time. it's more than yeah. uh, It's an experience all around. Yeah. I mean... Oh yeah. yeah, it's yeah. It, we're trying to make it something that puts puts Burien on the map. You well, know, you want to make it like it's like our little podcast here. This is something we do straightly yeah. out of our heart and stuff at this right. point and stuff. But we are continuously. We've got a bunch of stuff here. Yeah. Uh, 
just got a bunch of new lighting. I just got new, this banner. We just put this up yesterday. That is nice. And uh, and uh, I think that's if we can tr keep it kind of low key, but why not? Yeah, you got you got to invest in yeah, what yeah. you're trying to accomplish. If if you cheap out on the T-shirt, you yeah. cheap out on anything, everyone knows, and they're gonna tell their friends, "Don't do this race." Yeah. Instead, want, it's gonna be like, "Man, this is like they, wanted, they really yeah. did it up." I want every runner to come back and bring ten ten runners back. Yeah. Cool. And tell so that we have to limit because we will eventually cap entry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably around five thousand people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want it to become, you know, the race that I was trying to recreate. Yeah. <laughs> so South Seattle Marathon. Yeah, yeah. Um, so what about the uh Angel program? So the Angel program uh was an idea that uh, I believe it was Danny House that came up with the idea from the Ten Room uh, a couple of years ago. And uh, basically it was a way for people that weren't runners to participate by sponsoring kids at schools that couldn't afford to run but wanted to run. So for 25 bucks, they could, they could register or sponsor a kid anonymously. Um, so last year was the first year we did it, and I think we had, oh, 100 and 40 individual kids that came and ran the race sponsored by individuals pretty you know hard to sort of proctor that program because yeah. you got to get into the schools and find the kids and the get school counselors involved and, yeah excuse me it took a it took a little bit to sort of figure out how to make it all work you know and, and to get the get the uh, schools to understand that we're not trying to disclose who are low-income kids but just just get them signed up so we we so it's done anonymously we do it we do it anonymously we yeah. give codes to the counselors and we trust the counselors to get the kids signed up that that want to do it this year granger um has granted us ten thousand dollars to sign up kids and we also have a shoemaker program which which was also started last year by a local family larry uh shoemaker is the is the father i'm sorry i can't remember why for right now she's going to kill me later um but uh they made a donation last year of 500 dollars, and again it was like i had some counselors call and say we have kids that don't have shoes so what are we going to do and so i quickly got these guys to donate the money and we bought a big five card and they went into counselors went into big five and bought shoes off the sale rack well this year brooks running is going to give us shoes at near near cost yeah. um to to get the shoes for the kids so hopefully we'll have 500 kids running with 500 pair of brand new pair of shoes and uh it's a great thing i mean it's it's just makes makes me makes me happy <laughs> cool so the shoemakers were they donating the money for the shoes so they donated making... 500 dollars to buy you know, as many shoes as we could get for five hundred dollars, and awesome. you know, we didn't get. And their last name shoemaker. Shoemaker, that's, that's where awesome. it came from. Yeah. What's in the name? Yeah. There's an awful lot. Yeah, isn't well, there? so again, that was Danny House at the Ten Room. You, you know, putting his head together and yeah. like, oh, I know the shoemaker family. I bet they'd give five hundred bucks. And so, so that's where it started from. So, is that the guy that uh, Danny House? Is that the guy that runs the little theater over there? Yeah, he owns the Ten Room and the oh, Ten yeah, Theater. Yeah, yeah, I so love watching movies over there. He's an innovator <laughs> in the community. He yeah. thinks big, and yeah, yeah, you know, Good, great guy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, great. Um, what would you say is the state of the organization's, uh, development is the word out? Is there enough of a word out or are there enough people well, involved? You know, we are advertising regionally. We have an ad in Northwest runner, but, um, which is kind of this regional thing. And we are getting some runners from other places. This is the first year where we're not competing with Seattle St. Patty Day race. We're not on the same. I've always been on the same day. Mm. And I've always said, I don't mind that because I want it to be small. Well, I've changed. I want it to be bigger. Yeah. I, want it, I want to have, now that I've had that feeling of giving money to well, charities, <laughs> I want it to be bigger. I want yeah. it to be as big as it can be and be sustainable. You know, I don't want it to be so big that it's a disaster on on the community. So we'll keep it small enough, but sort of make it as big as we can and uh the state of the organization is you know we're still getting our sea legs we we have a couple of other um programs underneath the covid clover we we do the pie joust yeah i don't know if you've saw i've heard it. of it yeah so the pie joust we did in august uh we've done 
a thing called the Tour de Friends, which was uh, kind of like a pub crawl on bikes, but we didn't really promote heavy drinking and biking. So <laughs> I've had a friend I'm not so sure. Arrested we'll, for that. <laughs> I'm not so sure we'll do that again. Uh, we might do a restaurant, bike to a restaurant or there something like go. that. Um, and then we have this thing called Yeti Club, which is, uh, we'll talk more about that, I think, in another episode. Yeah, we want to have a special yeah. one on that. Yeah. Actually, Gina had encouraged us to yeah. have an episode just around the yeah. Yeti Club. So we'll definitely make cool. sure we put so, that down. So just briefly, Yeti Club is yeah. this outdoor skills course um, that it's a club that we try and replicate what a lot of the private schools have in their outdoor they have these great outdoor programs and yeah. public schools have nothing oh, like yeah. this so so it's a way to sort of capture what they have with almost you know a very minimal budget but we're trying to see grants and things like that so hopefully we can beef up this club and yeah that's really great that like you're that. that that's where your heart's at i love yeah. it um so what do you seek uh Getting back to Club to Clover, Clover uh, what do you seek from others regarding involvement and uh, participation and vol volunteering and uh, any other areas right now? Well, I, again, I, all of the the nonprofits that get involved, I ask them to bring the volunteers. Yeah. So I don't, I don't, you know, I make sure I I make sure that their needs we have are known to them. Yeah, yeah. And they know that they're getting paid based on their performance on race day. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, yeah. It's a great a, incentive. There's total accountability. <laughs> On all fronts. I mean, we want to give the money, but if someone, if someone, you know, leaves me yeah, yeah, yeah. in a bad place, well, there's no contract. We don't give, we don't pre-allocate percentages to the, it's based on how much you gave to the race compared to how much everyone else gave. And we I, see how I big the pie it. is and we cut it and we serve it. There was a gentleman we had on last year. Um, <laughs> I'm going to feel, it's, uh, oh boy. It, 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 but he has a uh, he has a uh, a program where it gets uh, local business people involved in the uh, schools and different organizations <laughs> and stuff, and it's a reciprocal fundraising type of a thing. Oh, that's great! And uh, that, that I, I love it. So it sounds like you've got most of everything that you need covered based on like these are the people that are going to be. That's right. Yeah. I mean, we do have our volunteers. Yeah, if yeah. anyone wants to volunteer, they can always email race director at covid com, and I'll find him work because there's always more. Work there's to always be done. something to yeah, be done. Isn't there, there is. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll put that back out at the end and put it on the site. Um, so, uh, Great. Well, this is uh, episode 25 of Green Interviews, and we will return with John Nelson after this short break. You are listening to Green Interviews. Gravity connects me to the earth, which connects me to people who connect me to myself more honestly. And gravity connects me to the crust, which connects to the leaves on the trees that make it possible to breathe. With naive mind shield Like a helmet They would tell us that we don't know How we feel or how to connect With other people on the planet Oh, if we only knew The power in each blue Disillusion little In the vision of one resides All destroy the individual For this is critical The self ain't everything Has to grasp, to cling, to mask Material vastly shipwrecked beings at last, release the greed amassed with capitalist tasks and contact. The mass communication is all we have in dwindling fast. Okay, we're back with the truly inspiring John Nelson talking about the upcoming Cove to Clover event. Uh, what was that? Uh, March 9th, 10th, and 11th? Yep. And uh, let's find out who and what inspires John and what has helped to make him a forerunner of change, a contributing member to our community, as well as to the planet as a whole. That's what we do here on Green Reviews. Uh, okay, who or what would you say has had the greatest influence on your life so far? Hmm. This is where we get into the deep. Yeah. That's, well, so I, I come, I have 12 brothers and sisters, and I'm down towards the end. Um, so my older, I had this the benefit of having... 11 over sibling, older siblings make huge mistakes in their life. And 
I just got to watch the show, you know, like, yeah. oh man, that was a terrible move. <laughs> that you shouldn't have done that. You know, my brother and sisters were great forerunners for me. They sort of said, this is how you get away with stuff. This is, this is how things, this is crossing the line, you know, don't do this. And so I would say my family, my siblings as a whole were sort of, I was very lucky to have all of those, those people go ahead of me and guide me through through some of the turbulent years of my life. I mean, we didn't we didn't have a lot of money. I thought we were, you know, pretty well off family and, you know, when the uh priest would bring the trunk load of bread to our house every Sunday, I just kind of thought he was making rounds to everyone. <laughs> he thought it was really community. nice or something. I yeah. had no idea that we were we were poor. You yeah, know, yeah, it turns yeah. out. Um, you know, and going to Ponderosa Steakhouse when my dad collected 15 coupons you know once a year was like yeah every family does yeah. this you know that was awesome. like a vacation <laughs> exactly so uh yeah so i mean i'm also my parents were a big influence because i can barely keep myself alive but keeping 13 kids help happy wow. and healthy is pretty pretty good role models for me yeah i'd say so so we talked about the uh the motto or the slogan for the uh, Club to Clover. Mm. What about for yourself? For your what is your personal motto or your personal mission statement in your life? Hmm. Well, I would say, I would say, lead with your dreams. Like, do, put something so big out in front of yourself, and if you only get ten percent of it, it's still bigger than anything you could have done without that dream. So. Dream huge and throw it way out in front of yourself and tell yourself and tell everyone else you're going to do it. And then as you get closer, then you have to do it because you, you're all yeah. wrapped up in it. So, yeah, yeah, no, I love yeah, it. I, I, to... I completely agree with that yeah. 100%. And I think that's that's worked for me pretty well. Um, so without re any regard to subject matter, are there any particular authors or books that have been inspirational to you? Uh. Well, yeah, I'm I'm dyslexic, so I'm not a real fast reader. Yeah. Um, but there was one when I was kind of a young adult. I read Starship and the Canoe. It's a really easy read, but uh, it was about uh, a scientist and his son, and the scientist was very popular, and the son went kayaking in the North Inside Passage, and kind of his discovery. And I actually actually went and replicated that trip. Um, later in my life when I was in my 20s and led three of my friends on this trip, two of whom had never been in a kayak before. Great, same thing. Great discovery. Great mm. discovery about myself. And so that that book kind of led to that and led to, oh, if I can do this, I can do this and I can do that. Yeah. So it's been great experiences. Another, um, I'm a climber at heart. Uh, I I used to guide for RMI on Rainier, and uh, so I've been around a lot of great climbers, people, lots of Everest climbers, and I haven't climbed Everest myself, but uh, very inspirational people to be around. Um, and in many cases, their lives are total disasters. It's really hard to maintain a family and be an Everest climber because yeah. you've got to be very selfish and egotistical yeah, yeah, yeah. to be a big mountain climber. You've got to you've got to have all the confidence that you can't fail and you won't fail and nothing can get in your way. Um, so I've taken a little bit of that, but I kind of stepped away because I did want a family. So yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm into that climb. I've not done a lot of it, but I know uh, that there, there, there's that famous uh, young guy that, that free climber. Uh, yeah. I don't know. So yeah, yeah, he, I'm out of it quite a while. And uh, I also know that uh, they're they're talking about closing down the half dome in Yosemite to a lot of the climbers and stuff because it's almost become like commercialized uh, and uh -huh. stuff. Yeah, lots of guiding and yeah. yeah, just too many people are climbing it now, you yeah. know. But uh, yeah, I spent some time in Yosemite when I was a teenager. Nice. Um, so, what do you see as the main responsibility we have to ourselves during our lifetime? Well, to to not waste it, you know, to to live the biggest, fullest life you could possibly live. Affect as many people as you can in a positive way and, you know, do as little damage as you can while you're doing it. So, I mean, in, in my perspective, you only go around once. So at some point in your life, you wake up and you realize that and you start to understand that, oh, 
I've only got this much time left. And either you kick in or, you know, if you're just coasting, you know, and some, you know, some people are happy with that and that's fine. Yeah. It takes all kinds. We, we can't have everyone in the world being crazy type A's like us. So, you know, I'm thankful that there are people that will sign up for the race and come out and, and participate. And, uh, you know, but everyone has their own capacity for how big they want to go. But by God, go as big as you can. Great. Um, so what do you see as our responsibility to our planet? Well, you know, I come from a family of 13 kids, you know, and most of them are procreating like crazy, you know. <laughs> I, ha I have 55 nieces and nephews. Wow. And so, you know, I'm, I'm super happy my family had a big, you know, yeah. my parents had a big family. On the other hand, it's not sustainable. There's a lot of people on this It's planet. not sustainable. And, you know, I think we have a responsibility to sort of, Maybe, you know, not have 13 kids from now on, but, but, uh, well, that is changing yeah. quite a bit. That is generally, yeah. yeah. Just not in my family. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a, that's a good one. Uh, so in, in your, in your opinion, what can one person do that will have the most positive impact in their own lives as well as the lives of others? Hmm. Well, I think if you get back to like, you, you've got to visualize what, What's the most you can do? And even when you visualize that, it's not big enough of a vision. You know, there's always, everything's a step. Yeah. And it's a river. And once you, once you accomplish something, there's always this. Don't sell yourself That's short. Because right. there's, right. yeah, big things. So I, so I have an example. My, I have a nephew that was in a car accident when he was 15. Mm. Came out disabled, wheelchair. And we were always going to climb Rainier. And, uh. You know, I told him when he was in the accident, I was like, you know, we're still, we're still climbing. He's like, yeah, whatever, Uncle John, that's, you wow. know, he was super depressed. And well, it took about five years, but we ended up climbing. I had this custom built mountain bike, arm powered mountain bike built four wheels, kind of built this, uh, had this joint in the middle so it would rotate and overcome rocks. And, and I worked with this builder on the East coast and I'm, I had never met him, but we just emailed back and forth diagrams and, you know, it needs to do this and that. And we ended up climb, climbing the highest peak in Colorado, Mount Elbert. And then a few years later, he went on a climb of Mount Shasta with uh, hmm. three other paraplegics. Uh, wow. Pete, Pete Rieke had climbed Mount Rainier and invite, had seen his climb, invited him to come do this climb on Mount Shasta. So we did <laughs> he used these tank-like machines that weighed like oh i don't know like 80 pounds it was ridiculous yeah. and wow. they would pedal and they would move forward about an inch at a time well that on top of that we ended up doing a uh, first ascent of mount fuji first arm power to certain ascent of mount fuji so didn't he was in a wheelchair you know he was done and now he's a mountain climber wow so, <laughs> just one step at a time and yeah anyone can do it you know you just have to have the vision yeah, no, I really love you for having that vision for your, that was yeah. your nephew, right? Yeah. Wow, yeah. that's fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so outside of your own thing, of course, what other groups or organizations do you proudly support? Are you affiliated with? Well, you know, I, I work, I volunteer for the food bank and uh, that's always been kind of a special, and it's such a basic need and I've, I work in a co-op of just friends in the neighborhood. There's eight of us uh, fathers, and we bring our kids out with us, and we go out on weekends, and we drive for the food bank. So that's Cool. Do you know thing. Otto? No. Oh, Otto. okay. Does he work with Highline? or? Uh, I don't know. He works with oh. one of the food banks. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a retired guy that he's a really He drives, good... too? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I don't... I don't <clears throat> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I'm, just curious if you knew him. Yeah. I'm not distributing. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't distribute stuff. I just yeah. I just put it in the locker at the end. I'd, I'd love to, but I have to work. Oh, it. yeah. No, I was just curious. Yeah, no, that's great. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's see. So can you supply us with uh, any specific uh, phone numbers or email addresses or web links for any of these groups or organizations? You talked about the food bank. How do people get involved in that? Well, the Highline Food Bank, yeah. Mike Worley is the is the director there. And, is that uh, like a HighlineFoodBank.org or something? Or I I, okay. I can't tell. No you big what deal. The, yeah, 
Google it. Yeah, yeah. Let me Google that for you. We like to throw that out. Some people have yeah. all this stuff like. Yeah, I'm sorry. Mode. I I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't store anything. Yeah, in yeah. My head. <laughs> Maybe that's another reason I like you. <laughs> I'm right there. Um, so what about what are the uh, best phone numbers or email addresses or web links people can use to uh, check out what you got going on aside from uh, you know the, you can, the Cove the Clover uh, yeah. was it Cove the Clover dot com. Yeah, it's Cove the Clover dot com. And that's can, the number too. Uh, the number Cove right? number two Clover. No, no, it's T zero. Ah, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah, so our logo is T zero. <laughs> Man, you're out there just to confuse yeah. the heck out of people. Well, I think if you put, I think I do redirect from Cove two. Okay, Clover, gotcha. If not, someone's squatting on it. And you, you mentioned uh, what was it, race director? Race director at Cove to Clover dot com. Yeah. yeah okay. Perfect. Yeah. Any other uh, ways for people to get in touch with you? That's a good way. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so let's see, are there any other upcoming events that you care to share? Uh, any, what's that? T-O. T-O, oh, no, gotcha. Zero. I said zero, yeah. I know, I know. See, I have dyslexia, <laughs> yeah. it all comes back to that. <laughs> uh, are there any other upcoming events that you care to share? Uh, any special uh, offers related to Cove to Clover or any information? Well, right now we have a family registration. And again, this is a direct response to family saying, you know, even at the cheaper rate, um, it's still too expensive. So we came up with a family registration. It's $100 for four adults or four, four people from the same family. Um, and then you can add on extra people for $10 each. So instead of it, you know, for a family of six, instead of it being, you know, uh, it's normally $35, $30 for the 5K. So, you know, you can get in there for 120 bucks yeah. for, for all the events. So that's that's really enabling for bigger family. That comes from my, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always think about like my family <laughs> never could have done that ever. So Yeah. And all the money, regardless whether it's, yeah. All the money goes back out yeah, in yeah. the community. So you can feel great about signing up and just staying in bed you don't even have to show up and we're still we're still thankful you signed up cool okay great well uh as we end here do you have any wise advice or helpful hints or final words that you want to leave us with uh yeah well when you're in the middle of the hill and suffering and if it's the first time you've run it always know that we put an irish piper at the top of the hill as the view opens up over the sound and if it's a clear day you can see mount rainier Wow. And the first year, I was looking for a plow because it snowed. So it's probably <laughs> not going to be as bad as the first year. So suffer through that hill, and then it's a gravy train from there on. So cool. And then you'll be with your friends at the end, and, and you'll be happy. Hanging out the root beer or the beer garden. Yeah. and yeah, yeah, great. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. You've been listening to Episode 25 of Green Reviews. We'd like to thank this episode's guest, John Nelson, for joining us. Thank you for sharing a bit of your world through this podcast interview. Uh, we hope you enjoyed your time yeah. spent with us here today. Thanks, Carol. That was great. You're quite welcome. Okay, again then, uh, does anyone have anything else? Any of you guys have anything else you need to ask or bring up before we wrap it up? No? I kind of look in there. Uh, so we've had some uh, scheduling changes. Therefore, on our next show, episode 26, we'll either talk with someone that has not yet been scheduled or we will talk with uh, Tristan Heberlin from Solstice Landscapes Design about healthy and sustainable landscapes, amongst other things, I'm sure. On behalf of myself, Daryl Whalen, and our crew, Randy Parcell and Michael Schwartz, we say a heartfelt thank you. Uh, special consideration goes to AmbrosiaDigitalMedia.com. Please check them out. Music is provided by John Henry Scully. At slapjazz.com, Dan Fagens at danfagens.com, and JD Hobson at jdhobson.com. We'd love to hear your thoughts on ideal guests and topics for the show. You can email us at info at greenerviews.net or call 206 650 4587. Make your day extra special by checking out greenerviews.net and YouTube dot com slash green reviews for video view versions of all of our episodes where you'll also find more information over the coming weeks and lastly green reviews is part of the healthy homecast network so please go check out the other like-minded podcasts and businesses over at healthyhomecast.com 
that's it. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Greener Views is part of the Healthy Homecast Network. Check out all their conscientious and sustainably focused podcast programs and businesses at healthyhomecast.com. Greener Views is created, developed, and produced by Daryl Whalen. Our audio engineer is Randy Parcell. Our video engineer is Michael Schwartz of ambrosiadigitalmedia.com. Music for this episode was provided by slapjazz.com, danfagens.com, and jdhobson.com. Your feedback is important. Please feel free to contact us with any comments or questions, including suggestions for guests and program topics. You can call us at 206-650-4587 or send a direct email to info at greenerviews.net. Be sure to check back often. New episodes coming soon.